so now we'll be doing some questions on ranking we are already done with the theory of the ranking chapter but i'll just take you through um what all we had just you know as a revision since we're starting with the example class now all right so under ranking first we learned two um formulae that are very useful in solving ranking questions so these were the two formulae one how to find the rank of a person or object from the end okay i'll, I'll use a um less boring color <laughs> okay i think pink works okay maybe pink is too much let's choose purplish yeah whatever okay so one way of finding the rank of a person or object from the end and then another was how to find the total number of persons or objects in a row both of these you need certain i mean you can't just find the rank of a person from the end if you don't have certain things right so basically if you have the total number of people and the rank of the person from the beginning you can find the person's rank from the end similarly if you have the rank of the person from the end plus rank of that person from the beginning then you can find the total number of people in the row so there's like a relationship between these three things total number of people rank from the end rank from the beginning if you have rank from the end and total number of people you can find uh, sorry if you have rank from the beginning and total number of people you can find rank from the end i mean you it, it, it works the other way too if you have rank from the end and total number of people you can find rank from the beginning if you have a rank from the end and rank from the beginning you can find the total number of people which is this formula all right so all of this you know has been explained in the theory class i also explained um how these how you get these uh, formulae all of this was explained here what we're doing is just a revision so if you have not watched the theory class do go watch the theory class first okay so for every uh, subject before the example class always watch the theory class okay so and then we just did a couple of questions and then we so went on with sitting arrangement and the sitting arrangement we had two types linear arrangement and circular arrangement okay and then so this is basically what linear arrangement is in linear arrangement all that you need to know is mainly just these things what an extreme is and uh, extreme is and what middle is right uh, these are things that we i explained and things that mostly you would know Uh, and then we did a couple of questions on linear arrangement and then we learned about circular arrangement so, so in circular arrangement basically people are arranged around a circle right like the name suggests and then here i um, explained what clockwise and anti clockwise is go watch that part we will also be um, so we will be going through clockwise and anti clockwise in other topics also it's something that you see recurrently for about i think for about three topics you have this clockwise anti clockwise concept so that that's important i have explained it for the ranking theory class and for other classes also we'll be going through it so yeah go watch that um if, if you don't uh, have a clear idea of what is clockwise what is anti clockwise what is this left and this right uh, go watch the theory class okay um but yeah i mean when we do questions if we come up across this topic i'll obviously explain it to you so while we do questions if we come across this i'll definitely explain it to you but it's easier if you watch the theory class first okay so then we did a couple of questions on circular arrangement and that's all there is. so ranking chapter mainly has one is basically ranking formulae which was the first two formulae i showed you ranking formula i'll choose a thinner uh, you know thin, thinner form of the pen okay and then other then the second thing that you have other after ranking formula the second thing you have is a uh, linear arrangement linear arrangement and then you have circular arrangement right this is all that you have circular arrangement and these both linear arrangement and circular arrangement come under sitting arrangement so largely this is all that you have under ranking so see by the way this thing that where when we you look at a chapter and looking at what all you have under the chapter so here i have basically made you know a very um, so i had a professor i at college so she, what she used to call this was the birds bird eye view 
basically after you're done with the chapter you just look at it from the top the way a bird would look at the earth you know an eagle or something and then you just have an idea of what are the broad things in the chapter that really helps with your understanding of the chapter and also you know when you get questions you can easily classify them okay this is from ranking this is from this topic and so on so it's very useful it also helps uh, if you want to recall certain things right so here basically just we're looking at, at it from a bird eye viewpoint uh, basically ranking has and these three things ranking formulae linear arrangement circular arrangement that's all ranking is about right so we're just looking at it from a bird eye perspective okay um right so now we'll uh, that that's enough talking we'll start with the examples okay in a class of 30 students john ranked 12 from the top what is his rank from the bottom so this is the first formulae that uh, i talked about basically all you need to solve this question is to know the formula uh, and you're done right so you can also i mean you can just uh, draw like it's a class of 30 students right so if you want to you can sit and draw 30 lines and then try if it's from the 12 what is the rank but it's much easier to use the formula also much faster so the formula is basically um, total minus rank from the top plus one uh, right so i'll just write it here so rank from end rank from end is basically total minus rank from top plus one right let me just cross check right yes total minus rank from the top rank from the okay so here just uh, one second when we talk about rank from the top what we mean here is this rank from the top is what we see as rank from the beginning so rank from the end is what we say as rank from the bottom and rank from the top is basically rank from the beginning okay so that's how it is and usually like for example if you have something that is seated from right to left okay i mean you can treat it however you want to but how it's usually shown is that the right is treated as the beginning and the left is treated as the end that's just a convention you can solve it however you want to it doesn't really make much of a difference but this is how it is the right is treated as the beginning and the left is treated as the end and usually whatever they've given in the question right so this uh uh, this quantity that they've given in the question is treated as that of the beginning because question where that's what they usually do they give the rank from the beginning and then we have to find the rank from the end because see if you think of it when usually ranks are given it's given from the beginning right so um, in your school if the class uh, toppers uh, ranks are given they give they give you ranks in basis of the first three right the first three or the first five and they tell you your rank okay five or six or seven or ten or whatever nobody says the rank from the last right nobody says okay this person is the least scorer this is the second least scorer that's not how you rank people right so generally ranking is done at the top will be the beginning and the bottom will be the end and from right to left the convention is to see it as right being the beginning and left being the end uh, but it's not necessary that you look at it that way either way you will be able to do questions okay so in a class of 30 students john ranked 12 from the top what is his rank from the bottom so basically all you need to do is total total is 30 minus rank from the top is 12 plus 1 so what is 30 minus 12 it's 18 we just do it okay so here you have a 10 this becomes a 2 10 minus 2 is 8 2 minus 1 is 1 so basically you have an 18 18 plus 1 is 19 so you have gotten the rank so his rank from the bottom is 19th rank okay so that's it moving on to our second question five friends a b c d e participated in a race a finished ahead of b but behind c d finished ahead of d but behind b who finished in the second position okay let's see a finished ahead of b so let's write a here we'll write a ahead of b okay so we are just writing a before b because a finished ahead so ahead of means before and behind means after okay in this context so when you say somebody finished ahead of somebody else meaning that person was in front 
ahead of means this person was in front and he finished earlier behind means he was behind uh, right he was in in the back he finished later on okay uh, but behind c right so a finished behind c d finished ahead of e so now we don't really know where to put d here right so let's just try completing the sentence and see if we you know have some kind of idea but behind b okay so we know that d has to come behind b but ahead of c right so now you have all five a b c d e we've gotten all five letters who finished in the second position so here who do you see in the second position a and so the answer is a so in see this is fairly easy right all you need to know is you need to read the question carefully write this carefully make sure you don't make any mistakes and also know these things and you know what ahead of means behind means um even if you don't if even if you haven't heard of this before it's easy to guess right ahead of means you know you would have been at the front behind means you would have been at the back it's it's fairly easy to guess guessing is not very difficult right so yeah it's fairly easy to guess moving on there are 15 students in a music competition if henry ranks seventh from the top what is his rank from the bottom this is also the basic kind of question where all you need to use is a formula okay um actually i think i should call it formula all right all you need to use is a formula right so basically what was the formula okay now i'll give you a moment do not look at your notes if you have any just try to recall what the formula is we just we did it just now right so uh, if you have the total i'll tell you what you're given you're given the total number of students you are given the total number of students and you are given the rank from the top here what do we mean by top like i said before rank from the beginning is what we essentially mean so how do you find you're given both of these things you need to find rank from the end or rank from the bottom so it's just for me to see not i can't see i don't know who is watching this but yeah it's just for you to check if you remember the formula right so i'll just give you a minute just try writing down the formula and then you can later on cross check if it's right okay okay so time's up uh and that would have been enough time right so i'll just try the formula here and tell me if you i mean you can't tell me but yeah just evaluate for yourself if you got it right basically rank from end is equal to total minus rank from beginning plus one this is what the formula is so now there will be two kinds of outcomes either you got this answer or you did not get this answer in either case it's great that you wrote this down okay there will be a third set of people who did not even write it down who didn't even try so don't be in that set always try so now see the thing is if you got the answer right well and good if you did not your brain you see okay so you write something down and then you realize okay there was a mistake in what i wrote and then you correct that mistake and now it's stored in your brain and your brain remembers okay so this is a mistake that i made and i i should not make this mistake again brain stores that okay so this mistake i is something that i made so then you're not likely to make the mistake again for your actual exam right so it's very you um I mean, I've said this in one of my other classes also, but when a teacher teaches, it is important for you to be active listeners. There are two kinds of listeners, passive listeners and active listeners. Passive listeners basically just listen to what's being taught, right? It's not, um, I mean, they are listening to what's being taught, right? But pass, uh, sorry, that's passive listeners. But active listeners, what they do is they try to engage in the conversation here especially since our class is not you know a live interactive one uh, i'm not I'm, I'm not sure how much you are engaging in what i'm teaching but make sure that you do because see, you are sitting in front of the screen anyway you are spending your time listening to my lecture anyway right so then use that time effectively 
बिकॉज यू 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 स्पेंडिंग योर टाइम एनी वे सो यू लेट्स से यू स्पेंड थर्टी मिनट्स लिसनिंग टू माई लेक्चर दैट थर्टी मिनट्स इज गॉन यू आर यूजिंग इट फॉर लिसनिंग टू अ लेक्चर सो दैन यूज इट इन द मोस्ट प्रोडक्टिव वे वैन यू लिसन मेक नोट्स ओके दिस इज वॉट आई एम लर्निंग दिस इज वॉट आई एम डूइंग वैन आई डू क्वेश्चन ट्राई टू डू क्वेश्चन विथ मी और बिफोर मी uh don't wait for me to say what we're doing i usually read questions very slowly and the reason i do this is so that you get time to figure out on your own i can even give you time before doing some questions so you can just try to think of the process on your own when you you, you okay when you see a question like this you know a certain formula has to be used in that case think of the formula on your own okay so things like that try to uh, be in be an active listener and not a passive listener active listening will greatly help you um so you know the there are people i i don't know in most classes you might be having people who never come who never study you you never see them studying but they score really well right so i used to be somebody like that in school i wouldn't study a lot but i used to score well and the main reason for that is because i would listen very well in the class it's important to engage in the class because when it's being taught itself if you try to you know get it all in your head and just memorize it and you just study as though the exam is tomorrow when the class is being taught it stays in your head for a long time right so just moral of the story try to be active listeners i'll write it somewhere i'll give it a different color so you give it enough importance <laughs> so basically try to be active listeners okay try to be active listeners should i give it some shading in pretty work i'm bad at this but yeah <laughs> okay now so okay we have gotten what our formula is now we need to know how to use this okay so basically there are 15 students that is the total number of students Henry's rank from the top is seven. His rank from the bottom oh, is what we need to find. So, fifteen minus seven plus one. Using this formula, this is what we get, right? Now, what is fifteen minus seven? Let's do it. Fifteen minus seven. Uh, okay, you you can't usually buy, yeah, but yeah, fifteen minus seven is seven, right? Uh, eight. How? Because seven plus seven is fourteen. So this plus one is fifteen, right? So seven plus eight. basically you have 8 plus 1 is equal to 9 and 9th rank he is at the 9th rank from the bottom okay that's it moving on in a swimming race there are 8 participants if michael finishes fourth from the top how many participants are behind him this is also a typical sim uh, uh, similar question basically you are given the total number of people you are given the uh, rank from the top so what is the rank from the bottom okay here it's a uh, see when you talk about here's a catch when you talk about how many participants are behind him we don't mean the rank from the bottom we mean the rank from the bottom minus 1 if you haven't gotten it i'll explain it to you so basically you have 1 2 let's say these are the positions of people okay so here 3 is at the third position from the top from the bottom what is his position again it's 3 1 Two, three. From the bottom, also his position is three, right? So this is his, his rank from the bottom is three. But how many participants are behind him? Are there three participants behind him? No, there are only two participants behind him, right? So when you say the rank is three, you're basically counting yourself also. But when you talk about the participants behind you, you don't count yourself, right? You count just the people below you. Um. So here the answer is two. So now. um so in this question you need to use the formula that we know but after you use the formula you need to subtract what right because if your rank is 3 the number of people behind you will be 3 minus 1 that is 2 okay similarly i'll just uh, 1 2 3 4 5 um just give me a second okay now say your rank is 2 what is your rank from the bottom 1 2 3 4 your rank from the bottom is 4 what are the number of people behind you 4 minus 1 right so basically what you need to find here is rank from bottom rank from bottom minus 1 is what you need to find out here okay so let's do this michael okay 
first let's find rank from bottom rank from bottom is basically the total number of participants 8 minus the rank from top 4 plus 1 to this we need to subtract 1 right so i'll just find this first so what is 8 minus 4 4 4 plus 4 is 8 4 plus 1 minus 1 is what we need to find that's basically this 1 and 1 gets cut or you can also write it as 5 minus 1 however you want to that's that's 4 or you know you can just say that this 1 and 1 will get cut and 4 so how many participants are behind him 4 participants are behind him but what is his rank from the bottom his rank from the bottom is 5 okay but so that's also given here as an option but you should not tick that okay so um, be very careful read your questions carefully okay moving on okay right Neha's rank is 21st from the top and 30th from the bottom. What is the total number of students in the class? So here we are using the second formula that we had learned. Okay, when if you have rank from the top and the bottom, how do you find the total number of students? Now, okay, um, right. So the formula is basically like this. Total number of students is equal to rank from bottom uh, i think it's minus top i'll have to check just give me a second so yeah rank from the end yeah for plus rank from the beginning minus one okay so it's basically rank from bottom plus um i just write it here okay it's basically rank from bottom plus rank from top minus one this is the total number of students rank from bottom plus rank from top minus one so what do you need to do here is basically rank from the bottom is 30 rank from top is 21 so just do 30 plus 21 minus one that is the total number of students in the class what is 30 plus 21 51 how do you get that 30 plus 21 1 plus 0 1 3 plus 2 5 51 minus 1 is 50 so 50 is the total number of students in the class so this is actually something i said in the theory class it would also be something you've noticed now in ranking questions the options are not as useful as they are for other chapters in some other chapters options are very useful you know we look at options and decide answers before we we might not even find the answer whole fully right we just look at the options and we get the answer but in ranking questions the uh, options are not very useful uh, we usually what we do is you we find the whole answer and then we cross check if you know it's available in the options mostly the options are not the most useful right but yeah it's still you can still uh, it's fine right it helps with cross checking and there are some cases where the options are useful okay like there are some some rare questions uh, which I think we did do in our theory class okay find five friends PQRST are sitting in a row facing north okay so just remember this they are facing north so like this is north right r is sitting to the right of t and left of q so let's do that r is sitting to the right of t okay so what is what what do we mean when we say somebody is sitting to the right of somebody else basically if you take t and if you look at the right of t you will see r that is what we mean when we say r is sitting to the right of t and left of q basically r comes here q is sitting next to s so now when we say next to s q can either be sitting to the right of s or to the left of s right so here uh, the thing is it cannot q cannot be sitting to the right why because q is already sitting to the right of r right so then the only space you have is here so s will come here now who will come who is sitting in the middle but here we have a problem we have only used t r q and s t r q and s we have an element here that we have not used p so now p can come in two places p can either come here or come here okay so it could either be p here or it could be t r q s p here now we just look at the options that you could have in both cases so here in this case in the first case who do we have in the middle r right so p s 
T, Q, R is the one in the middle. In the second case, who do we have in the middle? Q. Okay. So now it could either be R or be Q. So then just look at the options. In the options, you don't have R. So you know that Q is the answer. So that's another thing about ranking questions. You have certain questions where there, there could be more than one option. Right, like you see in this case, because it has not been specified to us. But that will be, we can fix on the answer once we see this. Once we uh, see what the options are. So once you see what the options are, then you can fix on the answer. Okay. Moving on. Six students A, B, C, D, E and F are sitting around a circular table facing the center. This comes under which topic? Circular arrangement. Okay. You know, if you see somebody sitting around a circular table or sitting in a circle, it is circular arrangement. Um, a is sitting between D and E. B is sitting between C and F. Who is sitting opposite to D? Okay. So basically, you have six students sitting around a circular table, right? Uh, let's try drawing a circle. Three, four, five, six. A is sitting between D and E. So the here the problem is again, uh, it could be of different ways. So I'll tell you, either it can be, we'll just write this down first. Either it can be D, A, E or it can be E, A, D. Because all we know is that A is sitting between D and E, right? So either E could, you know, either it could be this form or this form. B is sitting between C and F. Again, we have two cases. Either it could be CBF or it could be FBC. Who is sitting opposite to D? Okay. So now here, what will we do? We'll do one thing. We can try writing all the options down. But first, let's try one option. So let's do this. Uh, D, A, E. Let's take this and this. Okay. CBF. This is one possible combination, but we have other combinations also. Right. So if you, if you look at this combination... D, A, E, C, B, F. Okay. Uh, B is sitting between C and F. Who is sitting opposite to D? Now, the thing is, uh, right, so this is one combination that you can have, one possible combination. In this combination, who is sitting opposite to D? So, opposite to, this is also something that I explained in the theory class. Basically, here C and E are opposite to each other. D and F are opposite to each other, A and B are opposite to each other, okay? These are the opposites. So now, here the one sitting opposite to D is F, okay? But F is not even in the options. So this is not the uh, arrangement we are looking for. Now, what is the ne next arrangement? If it is D, A and E, the second arrangement you can have is F, B, C instead of C, B, F. So what does F, B, C mean? Basically, you will have F here and C here. Okay, this is what FBC means, right? So now if you have then the one sitting opposite to D will be C. So this will be the answer. Okay, so we can be sort of sure that C is the answer, but let's just cross check. What if it was EAD instead? EAD. If it was EAD, it, we would have had E here and D here. Okay, in that case, who is sitting opposite to D? F is sitting opposite to D. Now, that's not the answer either because F is again not in the options. Now, what if it is EAD and F? So, this is EAD and FBC. What if it is EAD and CBF? Again, we would get C. Basically, here it will be C and here it will be F. Right. So, here the one opposite to D is again C and so the answer is C. Okay. So, in such cases, what you need to do is basically look at all the combinations. So, one co so first try keeping one constant. If DAE is constant, it can be DAE CBF and then it can be DAE FBC. Okay. Once you're done with that, then go to EAD. You can have EAD CBF or EAD FBC. Okay. That's how you sort of uh, try all different combinations. Okay. So, and so we've gotten the answer as C. So even though there are like, how many combinations? We have four combinations. Even though there are four combinations, there are only two possible answers. Uh, and in that, we know that one is not the answer because it was not available as an option. So then the other answer has to be C. It's as simple as that. Okay. Moving on. 
in a class of 45 students ayusha's rank is 15 from the top then ayusha's rank from the bottom is again this is the same old thing that we have basically of the total number of students you have the rank from the top what is the rank from the end okay so rank from the end is basically total minus rank from the top plus one what is that going to be the total here is 45 rank from the top is 15 plus 1 what is 45 minus 15 is 30 how do you get that just give me a second 45 minus 15 5 minus 5 is 0 4 minus 1 is 3 30 plus 1 is 31 so the Aisha's rank from the bottom is 31 that's it now um, when you do questions of this sort and you get an answer, but you're sort of confused, okay, what if my answer is wrong? And usually, you know, the options are also very close to each other. They'll give 30, 31, 32. So, you know, say you get 30 as an answer instead, okay? 30 is not right. But if you get 30 as an answer, you will tick it. You will see, the, you you will be like, oh, hey, it's in the option. So, it should be right. But they give very close options. You would have noticed that in ranking questions. Just give me a second. I'll... Um, yeah, so here, here 50 was the answer, but they also give 48, 49, 51. So very, they give very close answers, right? So if you want to cross check if your uh, calculation is indeed right, another way you can do it is try finding the other thing. We also know how to find the total number of students, right? If you have the rank from the top and from the bottom, we have learned how to find the total number of students. So then try doing that. How is that? Basically, you add the rank from the top and the rank from the bottom and then you subtract one, right? So basically that will be 15 plus 31. Um, this rank from the bottom that we've got, minus 1. What is 15 plus 31? 46. 5 plus 1, 6. 3 plus 1, 4. So basically 46 minus 1 is 45. 45 is the total number of students. So you know that this calculation is right and so you can be sure. So that is one way of cross-checking. So how to cross-check? So such questions, I've just shown you how to cross check. This is important. Okay, this is something that's important because you need to, you know, there is a high chance that, you know, we you make mistakes because we are humans, all of us make mistakes, right? So to know how to cross check is important, right? Now, since we're done with that, moving on to our ninth example. In a group of students, Ahmed ranks 10th from the top and 15th from the bottom. How many students are there in the group? Again, the same formula that we just used. I'll give you a second. Try to remember, uh, you know, try just write down the formula and let me see if you remember it. Okay, just write down the formula. Basically, you have the rank from the top and the rank from the bottom. How do you find the total number of students from that total number? Okay, this is the, uh, the formula to find the total number if you have a rank from the top and rank from the bottom. Okay, just try figuring it out. Just write it down in your diary or wherever. Notes. Okay, time's up. So basically the formula is this. The for total number of students. Not sure if yellow is a suitable color for everybody. I'll just switch back to purple. Not purple, this is pink. Okay, total number of students is rank from top plus rank from bottom minus 1 that is 10 plus 15 minus 1 what does this give you 10 plus 15 is 25 25 minus 1 which is 24 this is your answer if you want you can cross check it like i said uh keep the give keep the total number of students and the rank from top and see if you can find rank from bottom and then just cross check if the rank from bottom is 15 itself if it is 15 you're sure that your answer is right right 
Okay, so that's it. We have done a couple of questions from ranking. Uh, so yeah, like I've said, ranking is mainly, you know, most of the questions that are asked are from this formula that you have right here. Uh, you know, those two formulae that we have about when you have total number of students finding a rank from the end or rank from the end and finding uh, the total number of students, things like that. And then you have circular arrangement and linear arrangement. It the ranking, I think some people might find it tricky, but once you do lots of questions, it's very, very easy. Okay, I've tried to take questions from like different topics that can be asked. And yeah, that's it. We're done with ranking as of now.